Great, thank you. Thanks for organizing this one and thanks for giving me this opportunity again, Robin. Uh, and thanks for everyone for, for joining me again today for another deep dive session on the dual right. In one of the other sessions where I talked about uh, how the dual right works and the, what is a dual right, it was a sort of an introduction about the dual right. Uh, so let's straight jump into the session details here. My name is Faisal Farid. I am a Dynamic 65 Finance and Operation Technical Lead at EXE Technology. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, here's my email address, uh, my LinkedIn profile, and you can tweet me. And I do write blogs. You can follow me on the blog. So there will be a series of dual write, how to dual write, configure, how dual write works. Uh, I'll be writing some blogs in a couple of weeks, so please stay tuned uh, on my blogs using this particular link over here. Okay, so uh, I'll be spending around five to seven minutes to, to reiterate what we discussed, discussed in the first session of the dual ride as part of the introduction here. Uh, very, very quickly here, as you can see, there are Two, two applications sitting over here, Dynamics by Finance and Operations and the CDS, which is a common data services. And also we can say it is a CE environment, Dynamics 365 sales, Dynamics 365 for, for field services. These are one of the apps for CDS. So what, what I'm showing over here, this is a UI for the finance and operations. This is a UI for CDS environment. Both instances, both environments have their own databases, finance and operations here, and both the end, this is the CDS database for sitting over here. Now, as you can see that uh, these are the two customer records, you can say uh, customer records pushing from FNO UI and it's reading back into the finance and operation database. Similarly, these there are two customers records sitting into the CDS environment, writing back into the CDS database. They are living happily, no need to uh, have these database, these records into, uh, into in each and every application. Now, what happens here, finance and operations came up with a very powerful uh, feature, which is embedded power apps. What it does here, it actually reads directly from the CDS database and shows information into the embedded power apps within finance and operations. So if you are finance and operations guy or consultant, you can, you will see, okay, in power apps, embedded power app, you can see, you will see a different customer information which do not exist into FNO database itself. What we need to do as part of the dual right, we want to have FNO data natively available into CDS directly. So what would happen, and this is where the actual dual right magic comes into the place. So what dual right does, it actually allows FNO data available natively into CDS database, as you can see over here. Once this happens, what would happen here, as, as expected, once the, the CDS will come into the big picture, the Fabricam litware, which were original customer into the CDS environment and also into the power app, embedded power apps, they also start appearing into your, your finance and operations UI. Similarly, the two customers which were in, into the finance and operations, they also start appearing into your embedded power apps and power, CDA, power apps for CDS. And this is all happening just because of the dual right, because dual right is actually writing between both the databases. It's a, it's a near real time, it's a bi-directional process. Then uh, it, it made these records available into all applications at the same time. Now, it, at a very, very high level, this is all dual right is. Dual right actually, it's, it creates a data into both applications at the same time. If you create an, update, any record in FNO site, it start appearing into into CDS definitely based on the mappings and uh, that uh, which I'm going to show you what, what those mappings and are and how you can define all those type of transformation between both the environments. This is near real time, this is bi-directional. Uh, many times I got this question, can this be done as in uh, one directional? Yes, you can define these directions. Uh, at the, at the entity level, which I'm going to show you, but the answer is yes, you can define it bi-directional, you can define it one-directional, either from FNO to CE or CE to FNO. 
So when I say CE, it's actually I'm referring to CBS environment here. So don't can get confused between the abbreviations which I'll be using as part of this demonstration. When I say CE, I'm just referring to uh, CBS environment. So CE is one of the apps for the CBS environments. So when I, then you can actually move across master data and business documents. So master data in, includes all your uh, master data could be your reference data which is because you want to move across all your uh, customer groups you want to move your payment terms you want to move your invoice tax invoice information across to the cds environment so you can do all all this information across both environments now let's quickly jump into the architecture how the how the cds environment works and how the the dual right actually has a architecture on it as you can see here i'm showing this this information is it is actually from cds to finance and operation environment in cds environment we have similar concept of entity and also in fno we have a concept of entity so in both the environments if you want to talk both the applications together you have to have entities so in 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 cds environment you have you have created some entities in fno environment you can't say I want to use directly a tables. This is not possible. The reason is because it, these applications will be using all data. What happens here if you have CDS entity here? A plug, few plugins have been written in CDS by a dual right team. So what it does, any CRUD operation happens, these plugins plugins get triggered. It reads the data from the entity using those plugins. And then, is it the hard code values which we are passing? No, it's using the mappings. So mappings will be a will be a core part. Whatever the mappings you will define between both the environments, it the plugins reads data based onto the mappings, and using O data, it sends across to the finance and operation environment. So this is why O data O data is actually work based onto the entities. Similarly, we have a concept for the data management module in in FNO environment. On to the other side, if you want to move data from FNO environment to CDS environment here, in, similarly, we have entities in both sides, we have mappings again. Rather than plugins in FNO environment at the framework level, at the, power, at the uh, uh, platform level, they have written some events. So these events, they capture the table level events. So whatever the events happen, insert, update, modified, validate right any events we can we can name it happening to the table level they captured they bubbled up all these events and to the into the entity level and using mappings again then they send data across to the cds environment again through O data so this is the a back-end architecture behind how the data is going between both the environments So this is an a, a other strategy which Microsoft tried to solve here and so that uh, the, prior to this one, all the information, the power platform at least they, they uh, every information has been living there happily. You can see customer success, sales, marketing, talent, field services, all the data they can share across all the apps here. But finance and operations, they it used to live alone here. So there so people used to write some custom F uh tools custom integrations to to make to flow data between fno and rest of the uh, applications what happened as part of the dual right so we want uh, we want to make fno database work very nicely with the cbs so data can be exchanged seamlessly beyond application boundaries and it does provide a one level of experience under t 65 experience so as you can see onto this right right picture this is the complete uh, umbrella of dynamic 65 so what you will have you will have one experience you will see okay uh, i just want to move data from fno to field services i want to move data across fno to talent marketing or any other applications without writing any custom applications without writing writing any custom tools, we just need to enable the tool. Right. So very important point here, licensing model. Do, do, I, do, do I need to pay any extra cost to enable dual right? So the answer is, 
dual right is is not a separate product it's a service which lives within a finance and operations so if you buy a finance and operations you will get the dual right automatically so the dual light as a service comes under the under the licensing of finance and operations that's the first thing now if you want to send data across to any other application and then you want to use that application you want to use that data then you you need to have a license for that application for example you are creating a customers into finance and operations you can use dual right to send this data across to any other applications but if you are sending this customer to the cps environment and later you want definitely you want to use those customers into the sales <coughs> sales environment then you want to <coughs> excuse me then you will need to have a license for the customer engagement applications otherwise you the dual right you will not be able to use those applications you will not be able to use the data which you have sent as part of the dual right here there is a link self explanatory link very detailed link about the pricing and how how does it work quickly want to spend a little bit of a time on this particular slide over here dual right has two aspects so do not consider dual right as a product here it is actually it has actually two in two aspects one is infrastructure and one is application here so infrastructure which actually provides you the real time experience with live data sinks this is a, one of the aspects which we will see there will be two applications for the dual right which i'll show you in a bit so what it does here <clears throat> It, it provides you a real-time experience. You can extend it, you can customize it, whatever you want it. Uh, it comes with the out-of-the-box uh, 66 entities as of now. And then there are some application side of this. <clears throat> so what does it mean application side? Microsoft actually provided you all the mappings, all the base structure, everything. Then you do not need to write any custom applications. You do not need to worry about how the data is going to flow. You just need to use this particular application, dual write application. You write it on top of that one. You extend it. You create your own custom data entities. You define your own custom uh, mappings between both the environments. You can add fields into your C environment. You can add your fields into your finance and operation environment you can define your mappings you can you can do whatever you want which actually comes as part of the application here it the and also the very important point is dual right is a solution awareness thing which means you can use ALM to move all the mappings everything you have defined as a mapping there you you can move across through a solution to from from your dev environment to the higher level environments so if you have configured everything into your dev environment it's everything is working you can just export that solution from a power platform a power apps then you can import this into any any other solution i'll i'll show you where, how does it work These are the very high level infrastructure features which dual right comes with at least a near real time uh, uh, UI is embedded into power into finance and operations. They are out of the box. The entity maps you can apply filters. You can define your transformation between both the environments. You can add standard or custom entity whatever you want. You can add customized fields. You can add customized entity mappings whatever you want. It's it's very very uh, flexible here few upcoming features if anyone want to instruct every if anyone is interested to know like what are the upcoming features and they are waiting for particular features here so uh what happened the uh, so i'm just for uh, write down a couple of them over here after you link the environments you will currently as of now you are not able to add more legal entities uh, in any of the environments in in in, in finance and operations especially sorry microsoft is working on after you link the environments and later if you want to include any any legal entity any company then uh, it will allow you to do so 
there are performance improvements coming up and there are uh, some uh, ALM ALM data movement operations between connected environments. They are currently working on uh, what does it mean here if you refresh one of the environment which is already cut link between for the CDS what would happen between all the mappings will I lost all the mappings or it will remain there as of now you will lose everything but Microsoft is working on this one and there will be a, an upcoming feature for this one. Then a few functional features Microsoft is working on uh, one of the critical requirement is having an lookup on, on inventory availability uh, and then uh, customers and the orders integrations there could be a multiple addresses across uh, from FNO to CE as you know like if you are a function FO, FNO guy you can add multiple addresses into FNO for each customer so currently you have to uh, do some sort of a customizations to to flow multiple addresses from customer to uh, to see as in, in account, but this will be a part now going forward. Microsoft is working on and trying to include all these scenarios as part of the product itself. So if you are having any issues, you, you see, OK, this is a valid scenario. This should be a part of the product. Please reach out to the Yammer group, reach out to the Microsoft dual right support team. They will they will listen to you. They will say, okay, this is the valid scenario. Let's talk about it. And if if they will pro, if they are happy, they will include this into your uh, upcoming features. Let's quickly jump into the the demonstration here. <clears throat> so as I as I said, like. Dual right actually lives within a finance and operations. So you need to have a license for finance and operations application in order to use the dual right. It you you go to your data management module under under workspaces and then you can go to the data management here and it actually lives at the very bottom of the tile here, the dual right. So the first time once you click onto this one, it actually shows you the the screen which I which is currently loading right now and it will show you there is no environment linked between uh, FNO and C as you can see here. So I kept this environment as it is here so that I wanted to show you how it looks like here. So once you go to the new new link environment here, it will it will list down all the current environments which are available into the same tenant. So it is a very important point. Both the CDS environment and FNO environment have to be onto the same tenant. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And also one of the implementation considerations and the important point to know is it is one to one environment. You cannot have finance and operation linked with multiple apps onto the CDS side. It has to be onto one one app onto the CDS side. If you if you have field services, and if you have a sales, if you have marketing, you have to consolidate all the apps from CDS side into one instance and then it will allow you to connect to, to your FNO environment. It will be one to one environment. So uh, as I'm just going to choose one of my other environment which lives on the CDS side, then it will ask me to choose what are the legal entities I wanted to I want to choose here. So these are the legal entities or companies list available into finance and operations environment. That that was one of the limitations for now. If I will say, okay, I want to I want to map my uh, my one company here, USMF, and I would say I want to use this legal entity. I choose two legal entities. I hit next once the environment up and running so then at later stage if you decide okay i want to include my another legal entity which is that or ussf something like this so you will not be able to do so you have to unlink your environment and then you have to redo each and everything so this is one of the limitations microsoft is working on to allow you to add legal entities later or later on once the environments are linked this is a health check here and these are actually the prerequisites in order for you to uh, to install dual right and configure dual right. 
so i will i will leave uh, this screen here for a moment want you to discuss okay what is our first prerequisites so it actually gives you have you have you followed all the prerequisites prerequisites or not if it's tick which which in in my case or everything is tick which means i have followed all the prerequisites if you haven't and you try to link the environments it will fail it will say okay this particular prerequisite it doesn't exist it's failed first is pu33 you have to you have to be on pu33 or above environment this is one of the requirements if you are not before linking the environments update your power uh, finance and operations to pu33 then you have to have the dual right core solution installed what does it mean here if you go back to your power apps here and you choose one of the environments wherever you want to and you will see under these solutions so i will say dual right core solution these two solutions has to be installed as part of the prerequisites these two solutions come directly come from microsoft they provide you these two solutions you can you can install these solutions from your app source directly from here so if you go to the app source under the admin center you will see these are the two different solutions exist there and you can choose one of the if if i'll quickly go to the admin center here this is a second prerequisite which you have to install these two solutions into your environment taking a little bit of a time to open this one i'll just quickly go back there and we'll wait the, the backend environment to respond then uh, next prerequisite is a, actually you have to add particular application users into your finance and operations environment so this is where i it actually gives you the application id you do not need to worry if it fails it will give definitely it will give you a red cross here and it will say you have to add these application ids go back to your active directory here under under system administration and then under setup under azure active directory application this form opens you need to add these two application ids which we, which has been referred here so i have added both the application with the name here before i further explain to this one i'll just quickly wanted to show you these are the resources here and these are the apps here this is the app source you can just choose any 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 solution from here to a right you choose this one you say install and it will ask you to in which environment you want to install so i have choose this my first environment here so it's it it has already been installed into this environment which is my field services for demo environment and as you can see this is the dual right core solution is already been installed both the solutions now the question is why do we need to have these two application ids what happens here as part of the dual right integration there are two aspects one is the in, one is the initial sync initial sync means it will get all the data from your source environment and write it back to, into the target environment the source could be fno or ce environment again the cds environment or target could be any one of the them so what happens if we can, let's talk about one example here if we have 100000 or maybe let's say uh, 5000 customers into into finance and operations and you want to sync all the data across to C, cds environment it you will just say okay i want to do initial sync so there there is you need to have you need to add this application id for the data integrator app this is the data integrator which i just name it di app data integrator so what would happen at that point if you want to do the initial sync it will initiate the batch job behind the data integrator you will not be able to see any projects any 
uh, any templates for the data integrator if you have already already used data integrator in past you will not be able to see all those projects and templates but it actually initiates a batch job behind the scene and it actually uses this application id to connect from from another environments whereas the second application id if you want to if your uh, dual write is up and running everything is working then you created a new customer into fno environment and this will go back to the cds environment it actually uses the, this application id there similarly we have to add these two application IDs into the into the CDS environment. So what would happen? You just need uh, there is a complete documentation onto the dual write page how to add these two application IDs in in CDS environment. How to add these one into the into the dual into the finance and operation environment. Both the environment both the tenants application has to be onto the same tenant. It is a requirement. It cannot be onto the separate tenants, and then this is the uh, one of the solutions which get installed as part of the dual right solutions which I, I I mentioned earlier. So these are the two different solutions which gets installed as part of the dual right solution. So as I've met all the prerequisites here, I hit next here. It actually tells you what environment from FNO to see it's going to connect. Uh, what are the legal entities and then create While it's creating this one I'm just quickly switching into my and my another environment where everything has already been configured for as part of this demonstration I'm quickly refreshing my environment due to the session time out once it's here we will click onto the dual right and while this already configured environment it's actually populating all the information into this dual right here i will just quickly go back to the my original environment which i just configured right now as part of this demonstration i linked it right now this this will be the first landing page you will see you will see all the all the uh, so first of all like uh, you may not find all the entities entity maps over here what you have because why the reason i i'm seeing all these entities here i have already applied the solution if you do not find any entity maps here just apply this solution here click on to the apply solution it will give you the same solution here which we have created here and you can say i want to apply this solution into this environment so this solution actually comes up with all the entities entity maps everything it's a part of the solution so this is the way once you configure everything into one of your dev environment you change any entities you change any entity maps you customize it you add it a few more fields into the existing entity maps everything is getting saved under this solution so at the end of the day once what you have to do you just need to export this solution using uh, power apps here what what is the process here to export a solution if you click on to this one you can say okay i want to uh, let's quickly jump into this one uh, you you will say okay i want to export this solution here and then once you in, export this one you will go to and your another environment let's say a different environment this one and then you will say okay i want to just import this solution back into this environment this might be your uh, this might be your uh, a uat environment or a production environment in a case so you can just choose whatever the solutions you want it will import into this way so switching back to it to another environment which we, we just configured at par as part of this demonstration so these are all the all the mappings which are do exist as part of the solutions here 
then to start with there are some environment variables first so what is this one onto the refresh it actually refresh all the environments if you have added new entity maps you have applied new solution and somehow the information is not showing onto this screen just refresh it and this is this is not actually the screen which do exist into fno environment this is an iframe so the i this is a ui which exists into into power apps but microsoft just i frame this ui into finance and operation environment so you can't really much you can't do much on this particular screen because this is this is not the customized screen as we see normally into these screens it, it actually gives you the form information you you can options you can uh, add but you can personalize your screens here but this is not the case with this one here then you have environment details here the connections it actually tells you which environment it is connected to from fno and cds environment what are the legal entities here and what are the integration keys as you can see the integration keys are empty for now and once i will go back to the dual right main landing page here and let's say i want to go and uh, say customers account here this is not running right now and you will see the status change the moment i click on to this one once i click on to this one what it does is actually go to cds environment and fno environment and reads all the metadata for both the data entities so the accounts is the data entity from cds environment customers v3 is a data entity from fno environment so now it's trying to read all the information from both the data entities the metadata information what are the fields there what are the names there what are their uh, data types there all these type of information it's it is trying to reading from there once it is done it it will start appearing all the end mappings here as you can see it is it start it shows all the fields which comes out of the box as part of the dual right core solution it comes as uh, all all the fields are already there you do not need to make any changes there if not needed if you if you need anything you want you want to add custom fields you, it's an easy way you just add the uh, uh, you just add a new field into your customers v3 data entity in fno site and just add a new field over here using this add mapping option then uh this is a, a, a once it's done now if i'll just quickly go back to the dual right and i'll click on to the customers here you can you can run the job directly from here and this is this is one of the part there are two uh, parts onto this particular screen one is actually the initial sync do you really want to do the initial sync or not if 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 you are implementing this for the first time and you want to have all the customers from fno environment move across as an accounts in into cds environment you say okay i want to do the initial sync and i want to do it from master would be from finance and operations and it will write back into your cds environment this is how it's going to work then another option is show related entity maps if this is a very good feature here it actually gives you the list of all data entities which you may be interested in to run in in one go if you want to say uh, for the customers definitely i want to have my customer groups first uh, i want to have my terms of payment first across to the environment i want to have currencies i want to have my payment schedule tax information and customer pay, uh, uh, payment methods as part of this whole sync if you do not do so and then if you run only the customers v3 here you will get a failure there because once a customer information it will try to import from move from fno to cds environment without having any base information any master data any reference data which is a customer group which is a payment of term these information do not exist into the cds as of now then 
it will giving you the it will start giving you the error messages there this information do not exist into the cds environment so uh, it it's always worthwhile to have a look into this this one uh, once you once you enable the the dual write process here so let's let's jump into the the other environment because i don't want to run uh, the sync into that particular environment this is uh, for another purpose as you can see here this is another environment which where i have already running this one if we go back to this one uh, customers account as part of the initial sync detail it actually tells you what are what for which legal entity it went through and how many got records got inserted updated and how many got errors got failed if we see anything got failed over here let's say this is this is the failure one here if you click on to this one it actually tells you the error messages here further down so this is coming from fno to c to crm account so there are 35 records exist here so if you go back to the previous screen here also you can have a look onto the activity log uh, it actually gives you an idea uh, of what is the what is the last error message happened for this particular sync then coming back to the dual right main screen here search for the customers here and then as you can see the customers group customers all are all, are, all everything is already running here if you click on to this one you you can say i want to add a new field here how can how can i use the product out of the box application to add my custom fields here once it's open here So first time it takes a little bit of a time when it reads all the, the uh, metadata from both the environments and then it creates all the mappings and the second time it doesn't take a lot of time so once you open this one you can define your filters here i just want to move the date customers which of of person type so what does it mean here if you go back to your finance and operations here so you will see whenever you create a new customer it actually asks you to provide a different type of uh, customers there so if you go back to the customer here all customers so what you are doing you are just you are just filtering filtering all the information here uh, this is a type here the organization and person so what i'm doing in as part of my filtering here i'm just defining the party type should be a person i don't want to move across the customer account which is of organization type so it really depends on to your implementation what sort of filters you you want to define it's it's really flexible you you it allows you to write down your own filters here in uh, you can you, you can do whatever you want to using the correct syntax for the filters here and for the fno guys this these filters are the same filters which we write for the any any uh, security form whenever we select any any customer from the finance and operations and we say okay i want to run for this particular job i want to run for this particular customer this is the same syntax from ce side we can also define these type of syntax syntax here filters here and what does it mean here it actually filters down the record uh, from cds side so th these filters come into the play when the data is coming from fno to cds inside it filters this data it will say okay if this condition meet then that record will come into fno side and similarly from fno to cds side you can define this uh, the very powerful feature on, on top of data integrator dual right has you can define your map type here this is the directions you can define you can make it by direction you can say okay i just want to say coming from fno to cds as as this is in this case and see 
there is no field for this particular ms dine underscore sale label into finance and operations so uh, in 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 cds we have a field this one but in fno we don't have field to pass data from fno to cds what we can do we can define a default value okay if this the data does not exist always pass a true value here this is how you define the true default value similarly you can define a default value from cds to fro using the same syntax term by default if it comes as a bi-directional here all again you can always change uh, but you can always change these directions here then this one it is a bi-directional here and along with the value maps you can make it bi-directional but you can also define value maps here so value maps are actually if you have a mail in fno environment in cds environment you do not have a value mail as uh, for for a gender as a male you have one for female you have uh, uh, for gender you have a value female and in cds environment you have a value two so how you can define how you can transfer these two these two values along the systems you can define a value map uh, which actually defines uh, in fno it's a male in cds it's automatically it converts into one here then if we go back to this uh, quickly value map here you can transform your transform your value you can say okay i want to truncate some data here and i want to move to only 25 characters let's say which will be happening from both the directions so you can truncate the data as per your requirements you can define your value maps here it's very easy you can say okay i will say true and it will say yes into cds i want to say uh, false from fno side it will define as no into cds side you can say okay i want to make a default value something like this and i want to pass any default value whatever you want regardless of like it's a string value it's something like you can define any 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 value here onto the top right screen you can actually go and you can filter all all your jobs here you can say okay i just want to see all the runnings ones it will filter out onto the runnings ones i want to see which are paused here there is nothing paused i want to see filter based on to the uh, all all jobs running here you can filter whatever the jobs you want you can just type down here it will start showing for the sales order let's say there are some fields mappings which actually do not exist as part of the out of the boss application you you as you can see i told like there are 66 applic uh, mappings come came as part of the dual write solution let's say if you want to have any custom process to be synced across both the environments you can always add a new entity map here so you will say okay i want to choose so to get rid of this particular if this is an interesting error here if you try to add entity map here and then if you get this particular error message which means like you are not the one who has configured or who has linked this particular environment because i didn't use my this particular account which i'm logged in with to to link this environment this is the reason i'm getting this particular error so on, on the other side if i'll switch back to my other environment where i was previously on i will just take off this customers here remove this selected here i want to add entity map here so i have used the same environment same user to link the environment and i i can only enable that i can only add new entity maps so if you are not the one who actually didn't link the environment initially then you will not be able to add the new entity maps here so you have to ask your uh, system administrator to do so for you so these are all the list of entities available into finance and operations you can you can choose any data entity whatever you want let's say you want to choose this one and these are these these are the and data entities available into your finance and sorry in serious environment you can add multiple legal uh, data entities uh, custom data entities and it will start appearing over here so let's say if i would say 
uh, I want to say audits here and all so you can define your publisher here and then I say I want to choose a default publisher. I want to just name it as a as a version here. This is this is the important point here why we are defining a version over here. Now what would happen if I'll say just save it. It will create a new entity map here in a moment. It's creating here and I'm still here and audit. So this is one of one 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 dot all dot all dot one. This is a new version. This is a new version here. So if if I'll click on back into this one. This is this is a moment where it's reading all the all the metadata again and reading all the fields from both the system into into these data entities here. You can add mappings here. This is the way to add mapping. You can say, OK, I want to add a description. Then destination field. I want to say uh, anything uh, operations here. And, and you and you say and you save it. If if these two fields are not of the same type, it will actually gives you an error message something like this description is a this operation is actually an integer field, but you are trying to map this to the string field. Then you have to define a proper uh, type of the fields from the both environments. And also, it's also giving you a, some sort of a, in the integration keys errors on the top here. What does it mean here? Whenever you, you choose any custom, any data entity here, the moment you choose this data entity here, into into this particular environment. If you go back to the environment details, which I showed at the very start of this demonstration, it actually creates the integration key here. This is an account integration key, which is the customer in FNO in uh, an environment. So what it does, it actually defines the key for you automatically. These integration keys are the primary keys or uh, uh, sorry, the alternate keys defined onto the CE data entities. So these are the data entities exist into your CDS environment and these are every every field here which is defined as the integration key. These are the alternate keys into those CDS data entities there. So and it comes as the moment you click onto any entity map here. It actually reads the metadata. Let's say I click onto the all products. At this moment, it reads all the metadata. It reads all the field information will start appearing over here. And at the same time, it reads all the integration keys, which are the alternate keys into final into CDS environment. And then it starts showing those fields back into your uh, into your environment details here. As as the integration keys. So if I will just quickly go back here and I will say, OK, I want to see the product once here. It will it will be it will be showing me uh, something with the project uh, with the products here. So uh, as we had just running few of the integrations here for this for in this environment, the integration keys are us showing for these particular jobs over here. Then you can you can have your alert settings. This is another a very powerful feature. You can define your alert settings here. You can say, OK, if a particular job got failed multiple times or five times or ten times a day or if there is an any type of error message application error message, I want to get I want to receive an email a, a notification via email. Uh, if I if I'm I'm going out and I'm just want to have a some notification sending out of the out of the application. Let's say if something goes wrong with a forbidden invite access you you define here. I want to say if it is unauthorized what actions you want to say if it happens only once you can say if it happens three times in one minute then email me and then stop the dual right job for this particular. So whatever the job it will uh, for that particular job any error any issue happened go and stop that particular job automatically so it will stop the job for you until you come back you investigate your issues and if any issue happened here you will see 
under uh, customer uh, for, for the issues I will quickly jump into uh, another environment here just quickly wanted to show you how to track how to uh, find out the issues here if you click on to this particular job you will see initial sync details and it will show you the activity logs it will show you the what are the error messages it happened and also it shows you the all the error captured under there so in, you investigate all those errors rectify it and then you can you can uh, start the job again if it paused you can resume it if it stopped then you have to start the job here uh, that is that is another option to health check which is the same which we did as part of the uh, linking the environments at, at at any stage you want to see okay this is still a case if someone doesn't have deleted these particular application IDs in any of the environment it actually gives you that health check at any point of time then these these are all all the parts of the 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 configuration in how you can actually implement uh, the dual right once you have this one up and running here let's say customers here so if you go back to the customers and i want to create a customer of type uh you can define uh person here You can say my demo whatever the customer group over here and you want to choose your region here and you create that account so dual right does support insert you create a new record from fno environment it does create a new record into fn into cs environment based on to your mappings as we just discussed so if we say okay red customers are actually uh, define both base whatever the field so it, it the direction is actually onto the field level which is again a very very a powerful feature of dual right you can define each and every field for the for the directions let's say you want to say i i don't want to move my 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 customer group from fno to cds environment you will say okay keep it remove remove the customer group mappings from here i don't want to move this one here this already been copied and you have some other processes for example so the moment it gets created here uh, i will go back to my my accounts here and uh, not active account sorry uh, I will just switch back to my all my accounts <clears throat> and I will search for this account okay So once once this this custom this custom account gets created here, I'll just go to the customers. You have a little bit of an issue with this environment. Not do not worry about this one. Uh, so once this once this customer account gets created as an account into into FNO environment, you can update all the information in any of the environments. So dual right does support update also and also uh, because as part of my previous demonstration in one of the other events uh, where which i can share as a link uh, for uh, it's also existing to the dynamics community uh, where actually we demonstrated about how to create customers how to update all the information and how to delete the information so uh, don't worry if, if it's this customer information is not flowing from FNA to CDS environment that was part of the other demonstration which I did previously so the the main purpose of this one the dual right actually does create all the information from FNA environment to CDS it does update environment and also it does support delete options also so if you delete any customer account uh, which can be deleted from FNO environment based on there are no there are no transactions exist uh, then uh, it will also get deleted from your from your cds environment then 
uh, the last bit I just quickly wanted to to highlight here. The implementation considerations or, or the importance of the implementation. This is a very important point. If we talk about if if you are a uh, if you are a person facing a customer and and the, you want to implement the dual right, these are the very basic questions you have to understand. Like there will be only one to one finance and operations and serious instance. This cannot be multiple environment. Both the environments has to be onto the same tenant and then to reduce the latency like it's taking a lot of time to to creating a record from one of the environment this has to be onto the same as your region so that do not consider dual right as a data migration tool it is not like this dual right is a separate pro it's a separate product it's a separate uh, product for the for the finance and operation lives within a finance and operation do not replace do not try to replace within with your data management or the data migration tool if you have a lot of customers lot of records do consider the data proper data migration process so if you have another existing environment into series where you have a lot of data already exist here then you consider you need to bootstrap data with the company information so in in finance and operation we have a concept of legal entities and and uh, and to the secure in the security which user will have access to the which uh, uh, record which legal entity in finance and operations in cds environment we do not have a out of the box concept for the for the data entity for the legal entities for that one microsoft has introduced a new uh, data entity called companies into cds environment which is linked between both the environments but if you have already data into your cds environment there is a dot net script which you didn't which you need to run and bootstrap your data before linking your environments so uh, this presentation will be shared through the community and uh, it, it has all the information in it how to run those those uh, scripts and then number sequence both system do not share the number sequence they have their own number sequence then and uh, another another important point if you have a cross company data sharing feature into fno environment which could be like you are sharing the vendor information across company into fno environment dual right will not work from the cross company this is an up upcoming feature microsoft is still working on this is not Im implemented as part of the dual right solution so as i as i said uh, the, this is an ALM consideration. You can customize, you can export your entity maps as a solution and you can import into any other different environment wherever you want to. Going forward, uh, it's, a best, it's a best practice to use as your DevOps to, to move across all those ALM solutions. This is the uh, best resources uh, which I got from uh, different presentations here. Uh, walk please go through all these present all those resources and if you still have any question please feel free to reach out to me you can you can tweet me you can follow me on my blog and here is my email address you can reach out to me at any time thank you so much for just joining me with this i'll hand, hand over back to robin thanks very much Farsal. um we don't have any questions in the queue right now. I'll wait just a couple of moments in case question occurs to anyone. Thank you. But thank you very much. Um, do you want to just go ahead and show your, yes, thank you, your contact information again. Um, we do have a question. What is the maintenance burden for dual right? So uh, it is a one-time process. And then if going forward, like uh, if you want to move across entity mappings from one environment to another environment, it is a very less maintenance. Like you just need to export through a solutions and import into the another environment. If you are just talking about uh, only the mappings and to the field mappings. Okay, uh, and yes, I have another question. Can the CDS environment be used as a data warehouse solution? uh that is something like i have to check because i a uh, data warehouse solution environment uh so uh if it because cds 
for the dual right, we are just linking between both the environments, CDS environment and a finance and operations environment. So the CDS environment, if you want to use this for the warehouse, this has nothing to do with the dual right. If you get all the data into your CDS database, which is the ultimate goal of the dual right, then if you happen to follow, you happen to use this warehousing on top of CDS, definitely you can still do it. You, you will still be able to do. Okay, and one more question. What is the time lag between the two applications? Uh, it's very, very, very minor, like milliseconds. You will not be able to find uh, what would happen and which records gets updated. So let's say there were a few questions. If we have multiple uh, users and both are actually creating a same account information in both the environments, who will win? Who will write first? So it's a, it's a very milli milliseconds difference between both the whoever will go first into the queue, that record gets updated, but you will not experience any time, time lag there. Okay, thank you very much, Vasal, and thanks everyone for attending. We've gone just a few minutes over, so. Oh, wait, one one more question. We'll take one more. Will the FNO events work on custom staging tables within FNO? Uh, no. These because these are the, if you are talking about the events which are specifically for dual right. So th there is the the dual right events which bubbled up using the actual tables. So not sure what we are trying to achieve using those events and to the staging level, but these events only bubble up from the actual tables to the entities and then it will trigger the dual light framework itself to move across data to another environment. Okay, thank you very much. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.